Hi, how, how you, you doing, doing everybody? It's me, Waddles, and welcome back to the guide. So, with it being winter and all, I'm feeling super nostalgic. A little bit more specifically, ultra nostalgic for this beautiful, sweet build right here. So, I don't know what it was with this, well, actually instantaneous correction. I know exactly what it was with this world. This was our longest world. We were in this place for a long, long time. A lot of great memories. It's very dear and close to my heart, but uh, this world, this sweet, sweet world. Inside of this world, we had a relatively simple build that became a relatively useful build, and also, in my memory, one of the iconic builds of this world. When I think of this world, I think of a few different builds, and that sweet clock tower, that's one of them. In honor of the sweet nostalgia that I triggered on myself in this episode, and in honor of daylight detectors, today we're going to talk just how they work while building an actual working clock inside of Minecraft. Tap like right now for more episodes, in 3, 2, 1, let's do this. Ha, huh, Minecraft to build. So I was considering consolidating, con contemplating, that's what I meant to say. I was contemplating with Bonzo, and we've come to the determination that this build is going to be placed heart, soul, and center inside of our world. That's going to mean for this build today, I need to keep it light, and I definitely need to keep it beautiful. If I can't do at least those things, well, it's all a failure, and the series needs to end. And so, with stakes like that, there's no pressure at all. Really? Hey, yo, but hold up. Daylight sensor, your daylight detector. What is the proper name? Well, technically speaking, both true. The daylight detector sensor thing is a block that is different on both versions of the game, but also the same. This is a redstone component block. In fact, one of the most, well, in, in fact, one of the most useful, never forgotten, insanely, insanely validated, very useful. I, mean, I swear, this is a very, very useful contraption. Yeah, just wait and see, I'll show you. The build. Before we can do anything else with a daylight detector, we need to have a home for it. We need to have a home for it. I was thinking today is finally the day after so long. After a big world tour, episode 500, day 500, whatever. I just, it doesn't matter, it's over now. <laughs> after all of that stuff right there, I noticed that there is a big glaring hole inside of this world. You should have told me sooner, I didn't know. I really, genuinely, truly had no clue that there was a spot inside of our world, flat, smack dab center, that was just like sitting unfinished. I wish you guys told me. For this build, I was envisioning something tall, sturdy, and strong. Like, overly taller than the tree. Far, far taller than the tree. So that any time I'm walking around over at the base working on a build, all that I need to do is turn around and look up in the sky. If the light in the clock tower is on, then I know that it's time to sleep. To pull all of that off, I was thinking about starting with a simple, or relatively simple, maybe circular build over here. Say, maybe a... Uh, maybe this first section could be like four blocks tall or something like that. Now you know me, you know me, uh, building a tower. I love to build me a good tower, especially when I build a tower that works out, kind of like the spider tower that we built, it's pretty cool. To this very day, I think it's the incidents that I experienced concerning Donna previously that uh, I, when I'm building a tower, I get so nervous. Uh, I, I need this tower to look beautiful and strong, but I also need this tower to look, uh, you will say tower-like. It needs to look like a, like a tower and nothing else. <clears throat> and nothing else that was strange looking at all. Uh, I hope I can do it. Tower, tower. Towers are beautiful, but towers get instantaneously, statistically. Ah, oh, where's my scaffolding? I know I have extra scaffolding sitting around in one of these chests somewhere. Where in the world did I put it? Give me my scaffolding. <coughs> anyway, statistically, talking towers get far more beautiful, exponentially more beautiful, as soon as they have an arch involved on them. I can feel it now. I get those romantic, warm feelings instantly. As soon as I mention an arch, a circle and an arch, huh. A circle and an arch and it's over for me. And so, a circle and an arch is just where we'll start. Color theory, or at least I think that's what you would maybe call it, but color theory. I've learned from all of my years playing Minecraft, I just aged myself. <laughs> I learned from all of my time playing Minecraft that like, if you're gonna build a centerpiece and you wanna keep it nice, bright, and light, then unfortunately, as tragic as it sounds, the beautiful black stone, the deep, deep light, you need to stick away from those things and maybe keep it with like, oak wood, maybe like stone, classic stone, or something like that. 
I want to keep the centerpiece area like nice and bright like happy feeling right like if that makes sense so with all of that in mind that means that I think a centerpiece is built out of maybe a little bit of oak wood stripped on the bottom there in stone that's gonna look so good often slept on building block is chisel bookshelf as well I love this design that they put on the block and the top too it's a shame we can't rotate it like sideways or anything like that but that's a great looking building block I think this will be a solid base and we'll figure out the windows later so for our centerpiece, we need to keep it light in here. And with that in mind, next up, I'm going to use the darkest wood in all of them, or dark oak wood, beautiful dark oak wood, but then we take it, we place it down, and then we strip it as well. A huge fan of the strip wood years after it was initially added to the game. It's still so beautiful, as beautiful as the first time we met it. Stripped the dark oak wood going really, really high up in some sort of like tower shape, something like that. I think, in fact, I know. That would look really, really good. Um, and I have to farm not only a little bit more dark oak wood, but do a little bit more thinking and figure out the proper dimensions. You poor tree. Oh, you poor thing. You poor, you know not what you do. You do not know. You're just a victim of your time. Your uh, positioning. You are beautiful tree. So here's what I was thinking. Maybe on this next part of the build, we could like step up somehow. Maybe we do like dark oak sticking straight out of the build. I could hang lanterns off of it. I like that. Building a tower here, one of my biggest concerns is, of course, you know, like I mentioned, making sure the tower looks good and not wrong in any kind of weird way. Yeah. To make sure this tower doesn't end up looking weird, wrong, or, yeah, you know what I'm saying, like anything like that. To make sure none of that happens, we need to break out of the square tower shape. To break out of the square tower shape, I'm thinking things that pop off this side of the build, you know, like something like that. Another thing that I was thinking, and I'm highly, like, um, in the unknown about this, but this dirt right here, imagine if that dirt, instead of being dirt or something, you know, dirty like that, imagine if that was a stripe of color right here dead center. Imagine a stripe of color sitting at the base of the tower right there on every single side, and maybe I could figure out a way to, like, accent it in a little bit higher up as well. But just in general, a little bit of color on this build. Whew. I think that might cook it and make it come to life. So I don't know, we'll see, maybe something like that. After that, I was thinking maybe a little bit of stone, and then finally, to start like uh, almost cap this whole part of the build off, what if we went up a little bit higher than I am right now with like walls, something like that. On the outside of the walls, maybe to make sure the walls actually become, you know, walls or whatever, we could go ahead and put trap doors and close them. A closed trap door, the wall will link together, it'll be perfect. If I came back in and say, put glass panes in the middle, well then it'll be doubly perfect. With glass panes strategically painted dead center inside of this wall, it'll all get flat, smooth, and beautiful looking. All that's left here to get done is a quick little time lapse. Three, two, one, let's do this. And problem. Alrighty, immediately. All supplies have run out. For the wood that I'm gonna need, dark oak wood, spruce wood, hey, not a big deal. I could grow the tree right there. I could, I mean, I still have to do that whole run around and light up the base type, oh, beautiful rays. I have to run around and light up the whole like cave thing type thing, but bone meal from this farm right there, that shouldn't be a problem. But this stone, oh, the stone, the silk touch pickaxe is not doing too hot. For the stone, I think I'll go ahead and head over to the local stone depository with sweet, sweet Markiplier instead. Then swing over to the lava farm after that sweet titan, and I guess just smelt it all up. It should probably work. dyes colors i've been thinking all about it i can't decide what color i want to do what if maybe maybe hear me out okay what if perhaps possibly light blue could be the color like look here listen in the middle of the night in my dreams i was thinking maybe light blue could accent this build to keep it really nice and light but also accent the build and get the color in there what if maybe we do a light blue stripe right there near the bottom of the thing and then I go a little bit higher up inside of this tower, which by the way has fully finished windows and is ready for the clock, but anyways, beside the point, higher up inside of the tower, what if I do the exact same thing and line a little bit of light blue in here? <laughs> Almost like a beautiful decoration. And look at how high we are. We're so high. 
So now, at this point in the build, it's time for the clock. To construct our clock here, we're going to need a couple different blocks. Block number one, I was thinking maybe birch logs. I think birch logs for like a clock frame could be really cool. That looks so cool too. Speaking of cool, ooh, the nice cool tone down low and up high peeking through as well. Yay, that's clean. I think I want to add more to the tower though. Like I'm taking a look at it right here and I feel like it like, it looks really thin. So uh, we'll, we'll come back when we do the detail. Now, the other thing that I'm going to need that I don't know if I really have it on deck right now is going to be smooth quartz. Yeah, I'm going to need more quartz. Nether, 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 nether. Fingers crossed. No. no. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. No additional quartz to be found. This is so sad. Look, listen, it's fine. It's fine. I will survive. Thankfully speaking here, I've got good old Markiplier, my dear friend. And over inside of the storage building, I've got tons of nether quartz ore. Oh, hey, by the way, I'm also trying to grow a gigantic tree right next to the statue. Hopefully it doesn't, like, impose, encroach on the statue too much. But I think this would be a good spot for a big old tree. All the way up top, I suppose, step number one is go ahead and start to create a frame. This frame for this clock here is going to need to exist on every single side. With the redstone, the wiring, how we're going to get it in, it's going to be nice and simple. And we're going to be able to have a clock working face from any angle. So anytime of anywhere at the base, hopefully I'll be able to see. I think if I'm remembering correctly, to kick it all off, we start with a line of logs. Drop the logs on the floor. And then what I do is I go ahead and move over here and do a staircase. Like, you know, kind of starting to angle up. That's going to start to form our circle. After that, we angle inwards a little bit more. And the problem, we hit this weird um corner spot right here. All right, so decisions, decisions. Thinking about the base and where I'm probably going to see this clock maybe a little bit more from. I don't think it matters that much, but maybe we'll do the staircases like that, like angling out on the front side, if that makes sense. So over here, we'll just go ahead and go ahead and make it symmetrical so it steps up like that. And on the side, it'll kind of just like blend in, whatever. After that, it's time for the next corner of the clock. And on this corner of the clock, I think it's all connected, no big deal. After that, it's time for the top of the clock right there. And then wrap it all the way around. And just like that, I think as long as I pull this back down symmetrically, I'll have the perfect, most circular clock in the entire world. Redstone lamp, redstone lamp. I don't think I've ever made a single redstone lamp in this entire world. That means this moment that me and you, we get to cradle here together forever and cherish. It's beautiful. The honorary first four redstone lamps. Daylight, daylight, daylight. Hmm, now in the world. Ah, that's how in the world. I can never remember this recipe. The very first daylight detector of the world, too. It's in our hands. Literally. Quite literally. With the frame built, laddies, next up, it's time to make the most beautiful looking clock face in the world. To pull it all off, smooth quartz, and a combination of redstone lamps, dead center, on every single side. I think it'll look right. And with this small, tight space, I'm gonna run out of, uh, I'm gonna run out of quartz. I'm gonna need to go get more. But with this small, tight space right here, easily piece of cake, we'll be able to run all of the redstone wiring of our dreams inside of here. Uh, I'm just a little bit short, like 12. You know, I guess while I'm at it, I should probably light this up, right? Like, I'm gonna put a ceiling on it. It's gonna get really dark. And for the interior of today's build, I might actually go ahead and, and swap that out with a blue door. It might match a little bit better. But for the interior of today's build, we don't gotta worry about it. There's just gonna be redstone wiring up at the top. I mean, look, no judging. You do you. But what is there for me to do in the inside of a clock? Oh, that's it. <laughs> oh, that's it. Oh, that clock. That beautiful clock, baby. That's it. A little more details and a ceiling on it, and <laughs> we'll be cooking. While we wait for the last of the quartz to smelt up, though, check this out. I cooked up an idea inside of my little brain here. So maybe we do fences on the corner right there. Then we do one more fence hanging down, something like that. Then what I could do is kind of gradient it into maybe a wall. It gets a little bit thicker, right? Then I could move down and put a barrel or something. Then I could go ahead and move down a couple more and do log, log, and maybe one more log. Three could be cool. Then I'll go ahead and strip those things and make it look good. And actually... Hold on, hold on, I have a different idea. Okay, okay, hold on, hold on. He might be cooking even harder right here. Let's go ahead and put that right there. Then we'll put a trap door and a, and a trap door. It's gonna kind of match that, but that's fine. That makes sense. Then I put a... No. 
I had meant to say. Then I put a barrel right there. Then I go ahead and move a little bit more down. I take this log out. I don't need it anymore. And I put another bet. No. Okay. Well, I meant to say what I'm going to do here is obviously put another barrel like that. Then I'm going to go ahead and put a solid block right there. A couple more trap doors. And then I think maybe with this projectory. Oh, yes. With this projectory for sure. I could go ahead and link it up down here at the bottom. Now look, look, what in the world does it do? Oh, it does nothing other than, of course, solid the tower up a little bit more, make it feel a little bit more sturdy, and maybe add a whole lot more detail to it. Look at it, it's like a square, solid tower now. Ah, I think I need to come back in after I finish everything and add that on every single side. Or heck, I'd just do it right now. I'm too excited. The daylight detector is one of the most advanced Minecraft redstone components out of all of them. By default, when placed in your world, it'll be on daylight mode, sensing the amount of daylight inside of the sky. However, if you walk up to this thing and interact with it, it'll flip it over to nighttime mode. For us today, nighttime mode is going to be the star of the show. It might be a little bit more useful in general. Combine a daylight detector with a little bit of redstone and check this out. All of a sudden, we have lights that light up inside of our world. Now the daylight detector is going to convert the amount of light it's detecting in the sky above the block into a redstone signal. The amount of light inside of the sky is going to change based on the time of day. At noon it's like super bright so the signal is going to go all the way to 15. At least on a, like a clear, bright, sunny, clear weather day. Graphically for this block this is what we're looking at. On the left side of the red line that's going to be daytime. On the right side of that line that's going to be nighttime. The red line is specifically the exact moment that you can sleep in game. So check this out. Right now, if this daylight detector was left on day mode, and as the sun slowly leaves this world, the amount of signal coming from this thing is going to decrease. Eventually, once it gets all the way dark inside of this world, the signal is going to turn off all the way. However, if I were to walk over to this thing right now and flick it to night mode, immediately the signal grows quite a bit. That's because after all, it's, after all, it's the nighttime. Look at all these mobs. Wow. In one of the graphs of all time, truly, look at all of this information. The daylight detector can detect just about anything. You'll also be able to pull a signal anywhere from zero all the way up to 15 if the conditions are right from this thing. Because every single moment of the day gives off a different amount of light, you could truly use this thing to, like, actually make a clock inside of your world with different lights turning on at different hours. When placed down, hooked up to a redstone line and set to night mode, today our golden number is going to be four. So check this out. If I put a bed down right now and try and interact with it, nothing. It's not nighttime. However, if this signal creeps all the way up to four, right there, as soon as that grows, boom. For a simple redstone clock that'll detect a sleepable time and non-sleepable time, four. A separate different side note, daylight detector, another interesting thing about this block is it's actually a little bit less than a slab. Maybe you're building a farm and you need like a specific height or something? Well, if that's you, that could be another potentially useful application of this cool block. Back inside of our world, this day with the pouring rain is not a normal day. The daylight detector is going to work different in the different weather conditions. If it's rainy, it's going to be a little bit less bright, which means the daylight detector is going to turn on how we set it up at a different time. But that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. I don't really care about it because typically almost every Minecraft day is a clear day. So another thing to know about the daylight detector is if we want this thing to work in a fully natural environment, well, then that's what we need to create for it. In other words, if I start putting blocks above the daylight detector, watch what happens. The signal is actually going to decrease. That's because I'm removing the amount of natural light that this thing can see. Putting unnatural lights near this thing, like say torches, that's not going to affect it. It doesn't matter at all. But absolutely cutting out the natural light, well, that's 100% going to affect this thing. In other words, we need to put it out in the open. So our current problem at hand has three separate factors to the equation. And factor number one is going to be these four redstone lights. I want them to turn on as soon as I can lay down in a bed. Four lamps? That means I need to get a signal of four into these lamps to turn them on right at the exact right moment. The third factor here is going to be out in the open. The daylight detector so it can detect all of the natural sunlight, daylight, or lack of it. Well, this little block needs to be placed with nothing above it. With nothing above it, that should be pretty simple. If I flip this over to night mode so it'll eventually work and then hang it off of the side of the clock tower, eventually, when I put a ceiling on this thing in like three minutes here, well, eventually, when I do that, this thing shouldn't be affected at all. I'm thinking this is more than far enough away. So after we figure all of that out, next up, it's time to talk about redstone dust, a signal strength of four. If I put four redstone dust in a line right there, that's going to be a signal strength of four. If I were to say maybe take that one out and bump it down a little bit, that's still going to be a signal strength of four. 
to be able to get this signal all the way down to these lamps, but still have this thing outside, we're actually going to have to boost this redstone signal up a little bit. To boost it up, a repeater. If I place a repeater after this initial signal strength right here, it's not going to affect any of this daylight detector. The daylight detector is still going to need to reach to a signal strength of 4 to be able to reach over to the repeater. Then the repeater basically just boosts it and resets it and allows me to send the signal to wherever I want in the world. Of course, if I wanted to, I could continue stringing repeater after repeater after repeater together to be able to power, well, gosh, I don't know anything in the world. Alternatively, I could just maybe reach the redstone down, put blocks right next to where the lamps are, so like sitting right there, and the redstone dust on top of it. Because of how these redstone lamps receive power, these blocks getting power on top of them is going to power the redstone lamps. I can guarantee it. I can guarantee it, but there's only one thing that I could do to prove it to you, and that's give it a little bit of time. Here's the thing, though. Right now, it's a strong-looking tower. Then, like, like, if I take a step back and get a good view of it, it looks nice. We clearly have a perfect circle up on top. The bee loves it, wants to check it out, you know, all of the things. However, it doesn't really look like a clock, does it? To clockify this build, though, it's nice and simple, it's beautiful. A couple little design tricks and details right here. We put some buttons, of course, at the major aspects of the day, right? Uh, up, down, left, and right. You know how it goes. After that, we put a little bit of fence gates in here, and poof, all of a sudden, it almost appears like I got a clock in here, right? With the bed placed down and the clock right there, watch this. As soon as this thing turns on, as soon as it turns on, it should happen almost any second. Now, beautiful sunset, by the way. Ah, oh, gosh, that's beautiful. Hey, anyways, as soon as this thing turns on, I can jump in the bed and, <laughs> and skip nighttime. And that's it. And that's it right there. That's it. The clock is working. The music is chiming. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. But there is no ceiling on the building. That's tragic. The only thing left to do today is I get to a little bit more designing, slightly more detailing, and a little bit of beautiful building too. Three, two, one. Let's do this, baby. Boo, boo, boo. Walk, 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 walk. <laughs> All right, so believe it or not, those sound effects you just heard, I made those myself. <clears throat> no, All right, this is a little bit of awkward, but you, you might have noticed it. The sound has been messed up ever since I cut away and cut back. Uh, I don't know how I managed to turn my sound off in the middle of clips, but uh, okay then. All righty. Well, this is a new one for me. So the original plan, before I messed up all of the sound, was to have a cool time lapse bit right here and do the comment of the day at the end, but hey, let's just go with it. We'll go ahead and switch it. The comment of the day today comes from Joe T's 2542 An awesome special would be comparing things from each of your main series world, each starter base, and so on. That's a fascinating idea. That's a really, really cool idea. The idea, the comment, comes from the episode that kind of actually, like, relit my flame, my passion for clock towers. A couple episodes back now, when we were doing the episode where we talk about things every single world needs, and I was jumping from world to world to world, I got the inspiration for this build, and I don't know, the idea of maybe, like, an episode comparing everything, or just, like, maybe something else, not even an episode of the series comparing everything, just, like, looking back, that sounds stunningly fun. That sounds amazing. Maybe I will give it a little bit of time, like, you know, space from the episode where we were just in all those old worlds, but what do you guys think? Do you like that idea? And if I did that idea, of course, I could do even more worlds that I didn't show off in that other video. I've got a lot of worlds. Let me know down below. And so here we are, right now, right here, at the very end of the project, the ceiling is up high on the build, and I think it looks really nice. I'll show you a side shot in a second. Down low down here, I'm trying to finish up a couple more small details. I was taking a look at the build, and it almost looked like maybe, like, not properly supported or whatever on these corners. So I thought maybe, hey, why not? A little bit of iron bars. Ah, no, let's begin at the top part. I only saw it from one quick angle, one quick shot. What do we think? You can't see it. You can't see it. Let's go ahead and try that one more time. What do you think of the top of the build? I will admit that I'm a little bit unsure with how I like pulled that final connection off right there. And I also feel like those spikes should maybe be a little bit taller. But top of the build, the whole clock tower, this view right here is maybe one of the best views of this thing. You can see the scaffolding on the inside. I think I'm going to leave that. Then you got the clock part right there. And then the very top room, even complete with a lantern, even though it's like not really meant to be inside of or anything like that. All in all, walking around and looking at this build, I think it looks so nice right here in the center and almost like this shot with a tower in the background. They look like little twins or something. We got the original one or the original one back there and then the new one or whatever. And yeah, it's just beautiful looking. I'm really happy with how this build came out. 
I got a great idea, a wonderful idea, but oh boy, is it expensive. 100% absolutely. We need something added to the game to make the strip log getting a little bit easier. But I was thinking, what if maybe, because it's not, again, like much of an interior or anything. What if we did like a window like that? I don't know if I'm gonna like fully buy it. Ah, correction, I vibe with it. Oh, I vibe with it, baby, it's beautiful. I don't know. I feel like I kind of went off on this building. It's really nice. And also, speaking of really nice, look at this tree. It grew in between cuts. Walking around over here now, I mean, you don't get much of a view of the build. Maybe should have done that one episode later. But more importantly, we start to decorate it up in here and make it feel more full than alive with a tree. I slap a couple plants in here, maybe some coarse dirt, and I think it'll look really good. I do kind of want to change the color of the flag now, though. So maybe wolf farm soon. Look at that thing. That's strong and tall. Today's build, I'm happy. That's about all I can say. I'm happy. Now coming in here next up, and I don't know if I'm gonna fully finish it all today, but coming in here next up, we're gonna need a path in this area. The old cow crusher, I'll probably have to pull that out too, and then this new road, the new path, I'm thinking it's gonna wrap around this way. Maybe, maybe you know, something kind of looking like this, cut it over there, and then it's gonna cut over this way too. We'll make a stop over at this building, then it'll go down this way, past this tree. I wanna leave that tree alone. Maybe cut through this little field over here, back over to home sweet home. I'm so tempted, like I, I don't know, sometimes after I'm putting a bunch of these paths in, I get like the itch to build a different type of path, like a more gray one or whatever, but for now, I think I'm gonna go ahead and just leave it as this classic path. After all, I, I do love it. Look, what I'm saying here is nothing's off the table. Who knows, maybe in the future, I'm gonna come back in and I'm gonna make this path a completely different style of path, but at least for today, for now, for a little bit of time, it's gonna be a keeper. Cow Crusher, Cow Crusher, you did me so well for so long, but I'm sorry. I'm so sorry to say, but actually, maybe I'll just, uh, I'll kind of leave you here in a way and turn you into a pond. How about a small pond in the middle over here? That could look so nice. That's perfectly cozy, right? It'll look nice, but oh boy, also, it'll be so functional. A great source of renewable water front and center in the base. I love it. Now, another thing that I want to come in here and do all over the place is make it a little bit more cozy and alive with some coarse dirt. Coarse dirt, hands down, it's one of the best ways to decorate, beautify a zone inside of your world. We go ahead and spill out the gardens that I was doing over here with coarse dirt already, maybe like a little bit more, and then also fill in this middle area. Well, gosh, I mean, look, I knew I was going to add this build in and get it good looking, but <laughs> did I know I was going to make this whole area feel perfect at home? Maybe I did. Right. Well, maybe I did. Walking around here and just like looking at the tower and what we did with here today, I'm so proud of it. Like, like I just love how this build looks and it makes this whole area feel even more cozy, which is exactly what I've been going for in this world. You know, you know. Another kind of cool thing that I noticed, so random, so like not important, but daylight detector. I never noticed that it's literally the same color as dark oak wood, like stripped. Ah, oh, that's so cool looking. The clock tower, I don't think I'm ever gonna get tired of this. Like walking around and here as the sun slowly sets the beautiful rays and then like, and then like the clock turns on and lets me know, hey, maybe I should like take a nap or something. I don't know. It's just so nice and this whole area, nice and cozy. Should I put picture flowers all over the place though? <sighs> you let me know. Minecraft Guide, episode number 56, a working clock and an introduction to daylight detectors. Over here at the beautiful evening of the world, the wonderful clock tower and that whole side of the base. <laughs> it looks already a million trillion times better and more filled in. Our new tower is not only functional, but it's a decorative, beautiful build, useful. Letting me know that right now, I should probably end the episode and take a nap. Thank you all so much for watching. Like, subscribe, early episodes on Patreon, channel members, world downloads. I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye.